Oh, hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today on another interview with somebody who made the leap. And if you've been following along, you know that I do these interviews with, right now they're people I know, people in my life. When I looked around, I realized I had a lot of people in my life who I knew personally who made the leap from doing something that they liked to making something that they love. And today I'm going to introduce you to Missy Schlegel. Missy and I met during our yoga teacher training in 2017, and immediately she's just one of these people that you're very drawn to. She just has a lot of love to give, and she wound up creating a business called Movement Love, and in it she incorporates all the things she loves. I'm going to have you. T I'm going to have her tell you about her business, but I want to introduce you to Missy Schlegel. She is the owner of Movement Love, which is a massage studio here in Syracuse. She's also an occupational therapist at Upstate, which is a hospital here. And so she balances both, which is very hard. I'm sure she's going to talk about that later. But Missy, thank you for being here. Of course. I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate it. Um, I want to get started right away by you telling you telling you your you telling us your story. So who are you? What are you doing now? And what did you used to do? Because this whole interview is about making a leap. So we need to know where you were and where you are now. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll start, you know, by I always thought, you know, you go to high school, then you go to college, you do the thing, then you start working, and that's what you're supposed to do. So I did all of that. I was working full time at Upstate. And as an OT, as an occupational therapist okay. and working there really changed my life because I was seeing all of this level of trauma and unhealth and what happens to you if you don't take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I got more into yoga and that kind of opened my world to movement and I was doing CrossFit and I had two injuries. Mm -hmm. I cleared both of my shoulders. So I made an appointment to see these guys up in Toronto that do body work. It's called Myo Detox. And he spent like four hours with me because I was so fascinated by what he was doing. He did a lot of shoulder work on me. And after he worked on me, I had no pain. So I was like, I want to give this to people. Mm -hmm. So I started practicing a little bit of that, met with a lawyer, tried to start a business and I found out I needed my massage therapy license. Uh, so, so being an occupational therapist, did you have a master's degree in that? Yes. Yep. That so wasn't I'm enough sure. for New York State. No. So in New York State, if you're an occupational therapist, you have to have a doctor's prescription in order to see anyone. We don't have direct access. Okay. So as a licensed massage therapist, I now have um, – like open access to people. Um, they don't have to see a doctor to see me. It's private. You come in, I do the thing and you feel better. Mm -hmm. So I went back to massage school. I was still working at that point. I had gone per diem at Upstate. I was working a part-time job on top of being in school full time. It was probably the craziest time of my life. I bet. Um, but I knew it was my purpose and I knew I just had to get through it. So can I, can I ask, can I interrupt for just to ask you so many people that I meet, they don't know what their purpose is. They know that what they're doing now, like isn't enough. Right. And you talk about like, I went to here and I went to here and then I got the job and I did the thing. How did you know that that wasn't enough? I knew I've always known that I wanted to help people and that was my calling was helping people, but I wanted to like do it kind of on my own terms and in a way that's like you actually feel different when you leave me. Like, you know, people get off of my table and they're just like, oh, yeah, like I feel so much better. And to me, that's healthcare. And I, I think I always wanted to be a massage therapist. I love touch. I need a lot of touch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's a very powerful thing for somebody to allow you to come into their body and touch them. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like I have this gift, you know, when I started doing body work, it was like, this is so natural for me and I love it. So I just, 
had to really take, when I took the leap, I prepared myself for the leap. So I was working a lot. I saved up a bunch of money in my savings account for like three months that if I failed, it was okay. It was going to be okay if I failed, but it wasn't an option. So, you know, I really had to hustle pretty hard. I was going into CrossFit gyms every Thursday, setting up my table, working in the open area, not charging what I should have, but it was like, this is what I can do. And from there, it was just like, people were like, you got to go see Missy. Like she, Mm -hmm. you got to go see her. So So you established a reputation for yourself. Very organically. Yeah. Because it comes from this space of this is my purpose and I want to help you. Mm -hmm. So if you can find what you love so much and just like you have to do the work. It's not like, well, I love doing this. So it's going to happen. If you're willing to really put in the work and work hard and just believe in yourself that it'll all work out, it will work out, you know? What you're saying is an important piece that I think some people have trouble with. You you, you kind of did two things. You took enough money to feel like if I failed, I would be safe. Yeah. And at the same time, failure was not an option. So right. I feel like having that money in the account, let your brain relax enough yeah. to take the action to know that, even if you failed, you would be okay. But you knew you weren't going to fail. You did believe in yourself, which is a, which is an interesting balance. Some people get really stuck in, but what if I fail? But what if I fail? But what if I fail? Can you give any advice to people who are kind of stuck in that, like, I don't really believe in myself because I've cheated on myself for so long? You have to believe in yourself. <laughs> you have to have that self-talk. I mean, I had some some negative self-talk where I was like, oh, my God, like, what am I doing? I'm walking away from a pension. I'm walking away from this really secure career that some people would like really love to have. But it was just like, it was never about the money for me. And that's, I think a big part of it. Why I did save up was because I never wanted it to be about the money. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when you don't want it to be about the money, the money will come. It's such a hard thing for people to understand, but it's true. If you're really good at what you do and you put the work in, people will pay you. And it it surprised me. I was like, oh my God, people are willing to pay me Mm -hmm. all of this money. And I don't even care about that. I mean, it's an important tool. Money is a very important tool, but like, that's never why I wanted to do what I did, what I'm doing now. It's, you know. What I'm hearing you say is you, well, you honored the little itch inside of yourself that you knew there was something more you honored that and you followed it yeah does that seem true yeah and it took a few years because right out of occupational therapy school I wanted to go straight back to massage school but I had guilt I felt this guilt that I had these loans that I had to pay off I didn't want to take out more loans but you have to invest in yourself having debt is a part of life And to me, I'd rather be happy paying it off, doing what I love than like having a little less debt and like being a slave to something that like I like, but it's not what I love. And you love giving massages. (laughs) I love it. It's amazing, you know, and you're really amazing at it. I can personally attest to that. (laughs) What do you see now? So when you look back and you're like, oh, I like sometimes I should on myself, like I should have done this or I should have done that. And you, what I heard you just say was like, when I was earlier in my career, I, I thought I should have just gone right back to life to get my massage therapy licensure, but you didn't. And so I'm curious now, when you look back at that time where you just were in OT, why do you think that happened for you? That definitely happened for me because it was always my dream to work at Upstate. The best okay. therapists work at Upstate. It's a level one trauma center. I learned a lot mm-hmm. working at Upstate, and I still learn a lot. We're level one trauma, so I've seen literally broken people mm-hmm. that I've had to touch and get them out of bed and move them and talk through this, like, okay, we're going to breathe it out. 
you know, very gently moving these broken bodies. So now it's like, I have PTs that will refer people that are a hot mess to me to do scar tissue mobilization and like increasing range of motion if they have tightness because of an injury. So that is definitely how that has worked for me. I feel like there's nothing that I can't handle if somebody comes into my studio, whether it's a hip replacement, they've had spine surgery, um, they have arthritis or any condition, I feel very confident in helping them. I've massaged a 92 year old. I mean, it's amazing. So I'm definitely very grateful to have my job at Upstate. Um, and I'm grateful, you know, for all of the things that it's brought into my life because the first time I saw a spinal cord injured patient, I was just like, wow, I am so grateful that my feet carry me every day. Like literally just putting your feet on the ground in the morning is such a big deal. And like being able to serve my purpose, I couldn't imagine, you know, if that were to happen to me. So it's like, it's also given me a way to find gratitude every day for my health. And I've had, I guess, the opportunity to see what happens when you don't have your health. So it makes me even more passionate about doing what I do. Right. Yeah. I think that when you have a jobby job, right? Like somebody pays your, pays yeah. your salary. <laughs> yeah. And then you also at the same time have um, a job where you have to create your own income like you do with Movement Love. Right. Um, you, you're grateful for the, a lot of people don't want to leave the paycheck. Right. And it's really hard to leave the paycheck. I know that personally because I was a teacher. Same thing as you, like yeah. pension, benefits, you know, you, you know what you're going to be faced with every single year. And at the same time, you're kind of tethered with the paycheck to not having the freedom. Right. And so how does this idea of freedom play into why you wanted to start your business? Well, working at a state job, it's extremely serious. You're, I was salaried mm -hmm. working 7 to 3.30, 8 to 4.30. We were expected to stay late. I couldn't sustain that schedule. It was a lot of level one trauma mm -hmm. every day. Um, but... I wanted the freedom to be able to do what I wanted to do and help people in the way that I wanted to help them. Whereas our medical system in the West isn't as focused on doing, you know, massage and breathing exercises and yoga. So I just wanted the freedom to give my gift how I thought appropriate and to set my own schedule and, to, you know, be able to take people, if you, like, I used to see a guy at 6.30 in the morning because it was the only time he could get in, you know, it was like, all right, I'm going to get, get up early today and I'm going to skip the gym so I can get you in. But I wanted the freedom to be able to help people however and whenever I wanted mm -hmm. without like the confines of insurance companies or doctors telling mm -hmm. me, you know, you can't do that. We're not going to pay for that. Or like, is that really skilled? And it's like, yeah, it is really skilled. Right. It's just different. So I love having the freedom to have my own schedule. I mean, I think yeah. I get what that's like. That's the to get that freedom, though, we have to, um, sometimes we have to give up some things. So what are some things, you've, you've talked a little bit about it already in this conversation, but what are some things during the time when you made the leap that you really had to give up to sacrifice? I had to give up a pension, um, yeah. you know, that security of retirement. Mm -hmm. um, I gave up, you know, I didn't really give up my career as an OT, but I stepped away from that full time, serious, like very science minded um, kind of thing. And I think in a way, people kind of like looked at me like, why are you going back to massage school? Like, you don't have to do that. So it was almost like for a minute I had to like give up some people mm -hmm. in my life that were like not supporting me. And it was just like, 
I just know I have to do this. So, and while I was in school, I gave up having a social life. You know, it was, I was working. I would get up at four in the morning. I would work out from five to six. Then I would be to class by like seven to study, be in class all day. And then I would work. So it was like, I gave up having a life for a minute, but um, I feel like I've gained so much back Mm -hmm. that like, I don't know, you give up, I guess, as much as you gain freedom, you lose a certain amount of some freedom. Like, I've lost a carelessness of, like, taxes. Like, I have to be very mindful of, like, keeping track of all of that. And that's really hard for me because I just want to heal people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, giving up, like, this, like, I'm just a healer. It's like, no, I'm learning to be a business person, too. So stepping into that role has been, I would say, challenging for me. What are some, um, a lot of my clients say, you know, I'm, and they'll put the just in front of it. I'm just a, like fill in the blank. I'm just a teacher. I'm just an OT. I'm just a healer. I have a lot of healers who, who work with me. That is so damaging, that thought. I'm just a. Right. Right. And then what I heard you say was, I'm a healer and I'm learning to be a business person. Like that's a very kind thing to say to yourself. Well, because I've said all along, like, well, I'm not a business person. And like, I'm telling my brain the wrong thing. So my dad has always taught me my whole life. Your brain is your slave. Mm -hmm. If you tell your brain something, it has to comply. So I really tried to turn my thought process of like, all right, I'm learning to be a businesswoman. Like I might not be there all the way yet because I don't care about the business that much. I'm, I care about the product of what I'm giving you and how you feel when you get off of my table. But in order for me to be successful and sleep at night, knowing that all of my bills are paid, it helps to, to be a business person. Yes. So, you know, and hiring people to help you be a business person, like an accountant. Vital. Yes taken a lot of stress off of my plate, you know, so that's kind of how I've still learning, but I know I just wanted to say something and I forgot what it was. Um, I'm learning to be a business person is a really helpful thought. And the thought, I don't know what I'm doing is a really painful, awful thought that will keep you stuck. And what, what, what a lot of people do who get into, they start a business because they love doing the thing. They love doing the practice of whatever it is they do, whether they teach Pilates or they teach yoga or they give massages or they, they coach people. Like they love doing that thing. That's their zone of genius. Um, then oftentimes they become a slave to the other stuff, which is what you're saying. And then they realize they have to hire people, but they feel really guilty about taking money for the thing that they love to do. And if you don't get paid, Missy, you can't help more people. Right. And so it doesn't, it's actually, it's actually serving your clients for them to pay you because if they don't pay and you didn't like charge your value, then you couldn't keep doing this and then you couldn't help those people. So it actually serves others when we charge for our services. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people have trouble with that. People will like a product more if they have to pay for it. Like if you're just giving things away for free, it's like they don't value that as much. So true. Yeah. If you're paying for something, there's more of a value to that. Yep. So true. So what is one thing that you wish you had known before that you, that you know now, but like you want to go back and tell your previous self? Just to be patient, you know, like I'm still learning a lot and I've had my own space for a year now. Um, Yeah. Just be patient, like stay organized I would have gotten an accountant way sooner. I would have invested in myself sooner. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, like, I don't want to pay these people. Like I should just be able to do it on my own. But what is your time worth? That's what it comes down to. What's your time worth? And if you're wasting all of this time doing things that you have no idea what to do, you build a team Mm -hmm. and it's way more cost effective that way. So I would have gotten an accountant sooner you know, I've met with somebody that's building a website for me that I'm still just like, I don't really want a website, but I know I need one. So, you know, 
just like be patient and as long as you keep doing the work and don't worry worrying I worried a lot when I first started because it was like oh like am I gonna have a full schedule this week you know just you can't worry worrying is like saying prayers for things that you don't want to happen so (laughs) you know so just like you have to stay patient and just keep hustling every day giving it your all but you know I think I've I have always had the OT thing to fall back on so that's been helpful too you know if you can set yourself up in a way to like maybe have something to fall back on you know, you're never totally stuck, you know, and I think I would have told myself that sooner too. Like you're never totally stuck and you're a grown up, so you can do whatever you want, you know, which is nice. Yes. I know most people um, are afraid of making the leap because they, they think I can't go back, but every single time I have made a leap, the thing that has propelled me is, and this is like going back to, I don't even know if I want to go to college I don't even know if I want to move out of my parents' house in my 20s. That's where I was. And I remember my stepmother saying to me, <laughs> they call me Jenny. She's like, Jenny, if you don't like living in Manhattan and it doesn't work out with that job, you can always come back here and get a different job. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could totally do that. I never went back, ever. Like, it was just one thing after the other. But even now, when I left, um, when I left my first business, I was like, I can't do that anymore because it was just so draining. But I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I could always go back and be a teacher. I could always go back. Honestly, at some point I was like, I could go back and be somebody's administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. I I just, I knew that I could do something else. And it's just, I feel like people think like it's all or nothing, but you can go back, but almost never do you actually go back. Right, right. And it's funny, our mind is this thing that can either really help us or really we get, we fall down this bunny hole of like, oh my God, I'm going to fail. And then it's darkness, but like yes. we lose our rationality because it's fear. So yes. when you fear, you just have to like push it away and be like, no, like I always get done what I have to in this is different. Yes. What advice would you give to other creatives who are kind of just stuck in their head with all of these things? write it down, like write it down, do some deep breathing and visualize yourself being successful at what you're doing. I've done that a lot. You know, I see myself maybe eventually in some big center, you know, involved with maybe other people, but still just like being very successful. I've just always seen myself as being successful Mm -hmm. because no matter what, that's important to me to be successful at whatever I do. So you just really have to just believe in yourself. And And cultivate that and cultivate that and cultivate that. Cultivating and you just have to do the work. It's not going to happen overnight. That's the people think like, oh my God, she's so busy and she has all of these clients. Well, it's taken me three years of really hard work to be like, I don't have to hustle in a CrossFit gym anymore. Mm -hmm. But I would because that's fun and I love it, but it's not something that I feel like I have to do to get people on my table. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just have to cultivate it. You have to work hard at it and you have to give yourself time. And if you fail, you look at it and you say, all right, how did I fail and how do I not let this happen again? You know, because there have have been appointments that I'm like, oh man, like I should have done this. Like Mm -hmm. I should have worked this area a little bit longer and then you write it down and next time that person comes in you try something different and you know you see what happens so you treat it like an experiment yeah yep it's not a failure it's a learning experience I think the same thing it's like a data point yeah yeah like well this didn't work so (laughs) what will yeah yeah so I know that you're really busy and that you're very booked I book my massages out a month ahead with you yes how can people get in touch with you or follow you or learn from you? What's so, the best way? Um, it's so funny because I actually like that it's kind of hard to get a hold of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a certain draw to that. Yeah, know? sure. Oh, this girl, like, how do I get a hold of her? Her number is not on the internet. Right. Part of that is a safety thing, like, sure. me in my studio. But, um, 
I built my business all word of mouth referrals. So mm -hmm. a lot of people have my business cards. Um, I'm simple under slash yogini on Instagram. So people can follow you there. Yep. Um, and then I have a movement love Instagram account, which I haven't been posting too actively on, um, which is like a goal of mine to be better at. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like I'm this little secret that right. if someone, you know, give them my number if somebody wants to come see me. Okay. But so if you want to work with Missy, PM me and I will put you in touch with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your story is really inspiring though. And I thank you for your time today because you, you have straddled both. It's interesting. You had a full-time job and then you had the side hustle as a massage therapist and then they kind of swapped and this is your full-time job. And now your old full-time job is kind of your side hustle that serves you in certain ways. And I love your story because you just keep trucking on and learning every day. And my most favorite thing is like, I'm learning how to be a business person. And I also hear you being kind to yourself. I don't really post to my Instagram and I'm working on that. Like, you're not like, ah, I'm such a, I suck at Instagram. You know, like it's just this, this gentleness about you. And that's, I think part of what draws people to want to work with you. Well, you know, life is really hard. It's hard enough on its own. If you're not nice to yourself. Yeah it's just going to be harder to like really, I guess, function in the world that's kind of hard. So yeah. you have to learn to be nice to yourself. And it's not like this conceited, like, oh, I'm great. It's like, no, I'm a human and I have a softness too. And I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're trying to better yourself all the time, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Thank you for sharing everything with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jen. This is super fun. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks, Missy. So yeah. Missy's message is so valuable. I hope that you get something out of it. Follow her at Simple Yogini. She's got this like adorable dog, especially if you love dogs, follow her. because her dog Is he in the room with you right now? I hear him chewing a bone or something. Right. There, there he is. is. There he is, and he's got like the best eyes and the best ear. Look at that ear! Oh my God, hi Wolfie! <laughs> so follow, follow Missy. She just always has a really wonderful, positive, kind message to share. And if you're interested in learning more about how to get in touch with her for massage, PM me, and I'll connect you with her. But again, thanks, Missy. I totally appreciate it. Thank you, Jen.